We are here at Takapatafo. We are in 1977. On this very land, a 506 day occupation took place. Leading the occupation was Joe Hawke and his whanau, who stood up for their tangata, Ngāti Whātua, against the National Party, whose leader at the time was Robert Muldoon. Muldoon planned to sell the land for high cost housing. These plans, leaving Ngāti Whātua, who once occupied much of what is now known as the Auckland CBD, with as little as their 12 acres of Urupa. The major story for me in my memory of my father telling me about his love for our whenua was his reflection as a 10 year old holding on to his nanny as she was wailing at the top of her voice. He remembers quite vividly clasping her tightly and being lost in her layered skirts as she witnessed her house being burnt to the ground and she was wailing at the top of her voice, crying with grief. And he remembers her body trembling and him trying to, to, to hold her to stop, stop that. And um, as the Auckland City Council burnt her whare down, down on the papakai. And for me, that was the complete story of what injustice is about, is that someone got hurt. A whole lot of my people were hurt by the burning down of our village in the 1950s for the sole purpose of getting rid of those Māoris because the Queen was coming. Queen Elizabeth II was coming to Aotearoa and they had to remove the village out of sight, out of mind. And that's what drove um, Joe Hawke to, to lead the occupation on Bastion Point. Breaking news! Russia conspires to invade New Zealand's shores. We must prepare for war. In preparation for Russia's imminent arrival, the Crown has seized Bastion Point from Nagati Fatua Maori tribe for military defence purposes, a completely legal act because the Defence Purposes Act says that we can. Kia ora. Good morning, New Zealand. We are back on the couch with... Carol and Monica. Um, today we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane because today marks 41 years since the Tukapurafo, or as it's best known, Bastion Point occupation. But the whole process has been a long journey. A, a very long journey. If we take it right back to its beginnings in 1840 when Ngāti Whātua actually very generously donated or gifted their land to the Crown to start um, what we now know as Auckland CBD. It was 3,000 acres of their own land that they had no yeah, which, for. Which um, people find generous, but really it could have been a bit naive, do you think, Monica? I mean, they, they knew what was happening. They knew that the land was getting taken that stage, yeah. so it was... It was it was happening all around them. Yeah, um, neighbouring tribes um, were being taken advantage of um, by the crown, and perhaps they were a little naive. But as part of their culture, the you know the manakitanga caring for others, that was um, yeah, this is true. Part true. part of who they are, um, and um, just because you see a weakness. Um, you know, I think that's what the Crown thought they saw, a weakness, and they were taking advantage. But just because you see that weakness doesn't mean that it was right to take advantage. Yeah, and, and yeah, I do kindness. agree. And the, the, they were really trying to gift it so that that wouldn't happen later. Mm. But yet, it did. So when it came down to um, May 1977, on day 506 of the protest, when it actually left. It was a pretty peaceful protest, wouldn't you agree, the, the 506 days? Yeah, well the actions of Ngāti Whātua were peaceful in itself. They set up camp on their land. Yeah. Um, there was um, singing, there was a lot of, um, I guess you could say, team or tribe 
Manona Tanga, Manaki Tanga. And so when 800, over 800, military, mm. Navy, police, they had armed defenders in waiting, they had ambulances. Do you think that was just like a bit of an overkill for, um, of, of, I guess it was the government just showing their power at the time? Absolutely. Total overkill. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the fact that afterwards they actually went round and demolished, completely demolished the camp. Once they've got their 220 two protesters, two protesters that got arrested that day, um, totally demolished everything. Steal the land, burn the possessions, yep. you know, take, take away their livelihood, but in compensation, oh, here we go, we've got... 30 state houses waiting for you on top of the hill, and I mean... Well, and that have fit, what, half, a quarter of their tribe in? Yeah, and the rest are just left to fend for themselves with no land, no food source there, you know, on their own. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy that it, um, that they just got booted up Boot Hill, they were calling it, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got booted up Boot, Boot Hill, went to the... Housing New Zealand and asked to pay the rent. government rent <laughs> on land that was Ngāti was gifted land to them. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And wasn't there um, a wee girl on in the camp that died? Yes, poor wee Joanie. Yeah. Um, that would have been pretty devastating, but I, I believe that was like a an almost like an empowering reason to keep going. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I believe from what some people have said, um, yes, it was sad, but if they then stopped on on that journey right there, then Joanne's death would not have been um, not yeah. worthwhile, but, you know, yeah. now she has a legacy and um, yeah. it doesn't seem like it was wasted or for nothing. Yeah. And, and even when, they, um, it still took 10 years before they were given their land back after that protest. So there was another whole 10 years. And I feel like Bastion Point was like a catalyst for the tribunals and um, the treaty tribunals to actually begin because Bastion Point was one of the first um, outcomes of the treaty tri yeah. tribunals, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, even on the the roundup of, you know, they got um, some of their land back, um, they got three million dollars compensation, but I mean the housing developments that had already happened on their land, only one of those houses is a multi-million dollar home. It almost doesn't seem, you know, it's still yeah, it's, not fair. Yeah, it still hasn't totally been resolved, has it? No. No. We're going to take a break now and we will see you back on the couch with Carol and Monica. <laughs>